Hi everyone, it's Katie and today I have a much requested and I think a bit of a fun video which is spread recommendations for beginner tarot readers. So basically I'm selling what it says on the tin, I just want to share with you a few different spreads. Um, I'm going to share with you um, one card spreads, two card spreads and three card spreads that I think can be really quite approachable and accessible for people who are just getting comfortable with the cards. So I'll start by saying that I think when you're learning Actually doing readings is really important, especially if, if you want to be able to read, you need to start practicing. I mean, it's one thing to kind of memorize the basic meanings of the cards, and it's another even to, you know, read from the books, um, but it's another thing entirely. It's a whole new world and a whole new experience to pull cards and read them, especially multiple cards together, and start to put them together and to weave them into a story or to use the card to answer a specific question or you know in a spread a different spread position so it's not just this card means one thing when when it's in a different spread position it will mean something different and then when it has other cards around it that will add nuance or shift the meaning again um, so i think practicing reading can be really really beneficial and it's how you start to develop your own connection with the cards how you start to you know kind of start develop a bit of a groove and um, start to see yourself as a reader and to see um, your own style or to shape your own style. I suppose before we get into my suggestions I will just say that I think it's important when you're starting, at least this was my experience, to keep things pretty simple. You know, maybe don't start with a Celtic cross, that's a lot of cards to deal with. Keep it simple. I would say anything from one to six cards. Six is still plenty to dig into. Um, so I, I, for me, I would say the smaller the better. Like keep it simple. That's why I'm gonna be sharing with you one card, two card and three card spreads because I think there's a lot you can do with those amounts of cards. There's a lot of different things you can explore without it getting too overwhelming and too big. The other thing I would say is if you're wanting to learn and to get better as a reader, it might be useful to keep things simple, keep things short term in terms of the readings that you're doing and to keep them reasonably practical because that way you can kind of record the reading and reflect on it and see, you know, how successful or accurate your reading was. So if that's something that's important for you, definitely keep it relatively short term. So perhaps no more than three months so that you can, you know, kind of actually see how this is played out. Um, and also, yeah, keep it practical. So again, you can kind of reflect on the specifics. Not only can this kind of just, you can start to understand, you know, what Tarot is capable of, but I think it can also just be a really good learning tool. If you're reflecting on the cards, you know, a month or two later, um, you'll start to see things maybe that you missed, things that have happened or come to fruition that the cards do really kind of point to that as a beginner reader, you just didn't notice. I think that can just be very interesting and a very good learning tool. So if you can keep things relatively short term and keep them fairly practical in terms of the questions that you ask, that kind of leaves space for you reflecting on the accuracy of your reading going forward, which can teach you a lot. Obviously, that's not a necessity. If you want to be more of a psycho-spiritual reader, perhaps that doesn't apply to you, but it is something to keep in mind. So let's start with our one card draws. Now, of course, you can just draw, you know, card of the day, which a lot of people do. I kind of have three different prompts that I will usually use. The first is just the energy of the day or what to focus on for today. Um, so that could just be, um, you know, just something to pay attention to or to look out for or something just to kind of, you know, as a touchstone to kind of check in with the day and keep coming back to, to returning to a certain way of being or thinking or feeling. The second is gratitude. Um, I think it was Carrie Mallon who did a challenge a year or two ago on Instagram it was called Gratty Tarot but it was basically gratitude tarot and essentially we would just draw a card every day and find something in that card to be grateful for um, you know within the, something in that card that reminded us of something in our lives that we could be grateful for or just kind of hinted at something that we can bring more gratitude into this was a practice that I loved um, so definitely just drawing a card and finding something within that card or the meaning um, that relates to something in your life that you can be grateful for, that you can bring gratitude into your life through that card, that can be a really, really awesome experience. The next is who or what can I embody today? Now this can be awesome, especially 
if you're using Oracle, but it doesn't have to. With Oracle, if you're using like a uh, goddess Oracle or a plant Oracle or something like that, kind of a who can I embody? Um, like what kind of specific goddess can I try to bring her lessons and her, her story and her personality? How can I start to live that? You know, if I do Lilith, how can I, you know, bring more sexuality into my life? Or another goddess, it might be how can I be bold and confident? Or how can I be gentle and um, notice beauty? Like depending on the goddess, you know, those sort of things of embodying something that can be really cool. You can do the same with tarot, especially the major arcana, but it's not limited to the major arcana or even the court cards. I know the court cards can be a very challenging aspect of tarot sometimes to learn. So, I mean, you might even want to narrow it down and just take the court cards out of the deck and shuffle that and select a court card to embody for the day. So if you draw the Queen of Swords, how can you be the Queen of Swords today? Now for the two card readings, I like this because you can kind of focus on two different aspects or angles of the same issue. And so I've picked three that I really like doing. The first is release and receive. So this is what it says on the tin. The first card is what can I release? What do I need to let go of? What do I need to forgive? What do I just need to release? off into the universe and stop letting it affect me. And the second is receive. Um, what sort of opportunity should I be on the lookout for? What do I need to bring into my life? What do, what sort of energies do I want to accept into my heart? What do I want to receive? What can I receive? Next is another one I use a lot, which is doing well, do better. So for the first card, it's kind of like a bit of a pat on the back, an affirmation of what I'm doing really well at the moment. And the second card is a bit of a push for improvement. And that is what can I do better? I really like this one because it's quite, it can be quite specific, um, especially it, it, it's quite proactive too in the celebrate what you're doing well, but always be kind of moving forward and always be improving. So I like that balance. I think this is a really good two card spread. And the third two card spread is do this, don't do this. So this is fun. This is a good, you can do this at the beginning of the day, or perhaps um, it's a good one for, you know, if you have a bit of a decision to make or you're a bit stuck. Quite simply, the first card provides some suggestions or directions as to what you can do, perhaps what you should be doing, what options are available that are good for you, and don't do. The sort of things that you want to avoid, the sort of things that you want to be really critical of or aware of, not falling into the trap of. And now for the three card spreads. I think three card spreads are probably the ones that I use the most because there's Plenty of information within the three card spread, but they're still really accessible. You don't need to sit down for three hours. You can, you can do that with a one card, but they're still, they can be quite snappy. Um, they're accessible, digestible. You can get a lot of information in like a, a good bite-sized sort of piece. The first is probably one of my favorite, most used spreads of all time. And that's the within without advice. Um, and this was first kind of brought to my attention with Kelly from the truth and story and Patrick, um, who kind of shared this as a bit of of a um, challenge on Instagram and I think they still do it intermittently but basically the first card is within what's going on internally um, you know what internally your inner landscape what is that bringing up for you what sort of thoughts and emotions are you having um, that sort of thing the without is what's going on externally um, what sort of things is life throwing at you today and the advice the advice, what can we actually do? What sort of things can we focus on? Another spread that a lot of people like that I do, I've done a couple of times is the you, me, we spread. And this is a relationship spread. It doesn't have to mean love, um, but you know, it's an interpersonal spread. So you being the other person, what's going on for them, perhaps what investment they have in the situation or what it is they want, depending on the angle you choose to read. And then me, what's going on for me? And the we, how can we come together? Or how do we come together? Or what do we need to do? This next one I have found really good too, if I wanna do like a weekly reading, there's lots of different ways to do weekly readings. But one is one that I've first learned from um, Kate um, from Tarot Girl, where she basically pulls three cards. One is for the beginning of the week, one is for the middle of the week, and one is for the end of the week or the weekend. So it kind of gives you a bit of like a broad overview of the progression of the week, what to expect and what you might want to do. So that's quite a simple one um, where it's not so much questions that you have for each position. It's just kind of like an overview of what's coming up for you over the week. The next is the classic past, present, future. And this is quite simply what happened in the past that's affecting this situation or led to this situation. What is happening right now in the present is the second card um, and what we can expect or perhaps what direction we might be heading in if things continue the way that they already are. So this can be a good one to kind of really get focused on where you're at, where you are, why you're here and where you're heading, um, which I think can be quite useful for gaining some perspective. And then with the future card, depending on what you believe about future telling and 
fate and all of that. A lot of us, though, I think will look at that future and consider, you know, whether we want that to happen and how we can either make that happen or change that future. Um, it tends to be a lot of us will view that future position as the likely outcome, but not the only outcome. Then we have a mini kind of decision making spread, which I like to do when I just have a bit of trouble kind of making a decision. And that's the pro con advice. And quite simply, it's kind of like a pros and cons list. The first card represents the pros of this decision or this option or this choice that I'm making. The second card is the cons, the shitty things or the things that I need to be aware of or perhaps look out for. And then the advice, some direction, some suggestion of perhaps which is the ideal option for me. Another one that I find myself doing fairly regularly when I'm going into new situations is the what to expect, what to do, and the outcome. And so this is useful for me just to kind of get grounded and have a think about what's going to happen or what potentially might happen. And so that is to consider what to expect. You know, when I walk into that meeting room or when I step into, you know, whatever it is that I'm going into that I'm unfamiliar with, what sort of things can I expect? Because uncertainty for me is a big thing and we can't eliminate uncertainty entirely, but I think it can just give us a bit of an idea and start to prepare ourselves for what might be about to happen. Next is to do what we can do, what we can focus on doing, which I think is a very practical, useful step. And part of the reason why I like this spread so much is this position. And then the outcome, the outcome of the situation, which as I mentioned with the um, future card previously, um, we can see that as the likely outcome. And then finally, think, say, do. I really like this one too, because all of that is very practical. Um, all of that's very proactive. So the first card, what can I think? What sort of thoughts do I need to be inviting or challenging and being aware of? What sort of things do I need to be focusing on mentally? Say, what do I need to be aware of and how I use my voice? What sort of things can I be saying? How can I focus on being productive with the words that I choose to use? Do I need to be bold and confident or do I need to listen more? Um, how do I use my voice? And do, what do I practically, realistically need to do in this situation? And then finally, a four or a five card spread, depending on how you want to do it, is the elemental spread, which I think is a very holistic and useful reading to kind of assess where you're at um, and kind of what is in balance and what isn't. And basically it starts with one card for each of the four elements, earth, air, fire, water. And so they will represent different areas of self and of your life. And depending on how you view those elements, a pretty traditional way of viewing them is earth would be for either finances, resources, or just really practically like your living space, things like that. Air would be perhaps mentally what's going on for you. Um, how is your mental space? How is your mental health? Fire would perhaps be your passions and your activities in the world, your creative pursuits, things like that, even your sexuality. And water would be your emotional realm, um, love perhaps, and how you're connecting to other people, relationships. And then a fifth card could come in which could represent the element of spirit, or you could more use it as like a holistic view or of you know, a piece of advice moving forward. So those are a bunch of readings and spreads that I think are really simple and accessible that can be useful for beginners, that you can start reading almost straight away and that can you can start to see how cards can be used in different ways um, and can be useful on a daily or weekly basis as well. Obviously, if you're feeling confident, if you're feeling bold, you're more than welcome. I'm not gonna stop you from going ahead and doing a Celtic cross or whatever else massive spread. Um, but for personally for me, I just found it really useful to kind of just keep things simple, you know, start with the basics and get comfortable with those basics before leaping off into big giant spreads. And not to mention the fact that, you know, smaller spreads can give you so much information, especially if you sit with them and really consider the nuances. Um, you don't need to do a massive spread in order to have a rich reading. Those smaller ones can be just as effective and powerful. Obviously you can use these spreads with tarot or oracle cards, it doesn't matter, or you can use a mix of both. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video. And for those of you who have been requesting it. I hope you found a spread or two to have a play around with. And if you guys have any suggestions, if you're a bit of a reader yourself, love to hear your kind of beginner basic spreads, either that you can go to on a regular basis or that you found helpful right at the beginning of your practice. And I will talk to you all again very soon. So much love. Bye.